Hey everybody, it's Corey with CVMA, and today we're here to talk about the third form in the Heon series, Heon Sandan. The Heon Sandan is a shorter form uh, than most of the Heons that are in the Heon series, but there's a lot of intricate movements and a lot of rather difficult stance transitions. So we're going to spend some time talking about those transitions, going through each movement to kind of break down and maybe help those transitions for you to be a little smoother as you go through the form. Uh, like the rest of the uh, Heon series videos that we do, we're going to show the form first in its entirety, then we're going to come back and talk through the detail. All right, welcome back. So we're going to start talking about the detail of this form. Um, as I go through the form, I'm going to switch uh, directions on you a little bit just to show um, different angles, but I'm going to try to stay as much in the same direction as possible. So if you're getting confused when I'm changing directions on the, the different detail portions here, go back and watch the form in its entirety to figure out where that section goes into the form. So we're going to first start out with the beginning position, right, which is our ready position as always. Now our first movement is going to be to the left side. We're going to step out into a back stance on the left side. So we're going to just drop the foot into a, a back stance towards the left side. And we're going to execute an inside forearm block. So I'm going to look as I move, look as I set, inside forearm block. Now the next movement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my back foot and meet my front foot. Um, it's important here that you don't stand completely straight up. We never really want to do that. We're going to come out and meet with knees slightly bent. As I do this, I'm going to take my back hand, which is pulled back, and I'm going to sneak it underneath. So it's going to come straight underneath and meet the arm, the left arm. Once I settle, I'm going to execute a scissor block. So I'm going to raise the right arm up and lower the left arm down. It's a scissor block. And then I'm going to do one more scissor block. So I'm going to meet in the middle and switch the arms. Now, I'm going to repeat this to the other direction. So I'm going to look over my right shoulder, step and prepare the block at the same time, turning into the inside forearm block. Now, again, I'm going to take my back foot, meet the front foot as I drop the left arm underneath, and scissor block. And then one more on the other side. So meet in the middle, scissor block. Now I'm going to start coming down the center of the floor, or down the, the front of the, toward the front of the room. So I'm going to look, and as I look, I'm going to set my arms for a double forearm block. So I'm going to bring them to about shoulder level. I'm going to step out back stance, double forearm block. Now again here, real important to keep this elbow tight in here, so don't let it fly out. Keep it attached to the body. Now, what you're going to do with your front hand, or your lead hand, your left hand, is you're going to drop it and turn it over. So it's going to go basically parallel to the ground, um, about shoulder level. You're going to drop, and as you do that, this right hand is going to come back open to the ribs. As you do this, you're going to be stepping forward into a front stance. We're going to execute a spear hand strike. So we're going to step. Spear hand strike. Now, this strike hand is right underneath the elbow, and the hand is going straight toward the center of the body. Remember, not toward the, the shoulder, but again, toward the center of the body. Um, hand is completely straight, thumb is tucked in a spear hand strike. Now, imagine somebody grabs your arm here. So, they're going to grab my arm, and I'm going to sort of give them what they want. So I'm going to turn the arm over here and make it as though I'm going to put it, they're going to go ahead and put it behind my back. Well, at the same time I'm doing that, I'm going to take my feet and I'm going to switch my front stance from this direction to the left. So I'm just going to pivot my feet. So all in all, it looks like this here. 
Now, as soon as I do that, I'm going to take my, my left leg, and it's going to go behind me. So as it goes behind me, what I'm going to do is, is sneak this right arm that's being trapped underneath this way. I'm just going to bring it straight up at the elbow, or basically um, bend at the elbow, come straight up in toward the body. So don't go out here. It's coming straight toward the body this way. So as I do that, that back foot's coming around here. Now, once it's done that, it's going to go back to um, ready position here. At the same time, I'm going to turn, continue to turn, and I'm going to strike with a hammer strike in horse stance. So again, one more time on that motion. Spear hand strike, shift the feet, drop the arm. As you bring the arm in, left foot goes behind you. Now as you're settling, that right hand's broken the grip. It goes back to its ready position. Left hand's going to come out into a hammer foot strike. And here it's, it's his palm down, not palm out. So it's palm down here. Now you're going to turn the right, or excuse me, turn the left foot forward, step, and straight punch, front stance, right toward the center of the body. Now, as you go into the next movement, what you're going to want to be careful of is throwing the arms either way far back or way too high. The arms are going to come up to about your ear level on both sides, and they're parallel to each other. So you don't want one higher than the other. Um, you don't want them too high. You don't want them too low. Right about the ear level is, is sufficient for this. Now, this all happens in motion. So as you're, so from our feet up, we're going to take our back foot. It's going to come right to where my, excuse me, we're going to take our left foot and come right up to our right foot. So it's going to be behind, and we're going to turn and end up straight up here. At the same time, we're going to raise the hands, and then they're going to drop straight down to the belt line. So no circles, so we're not going outward, we're going straight up, straight down. From here, it's just dipping straight down toward the belt. Notice the, notice the, the, the fists are palm facing backwards, not palm facing up or inward. So we're basically, my, my first knuckle is touching my belt. So all of that put together, hands come up as we move. And as I rotate and set myself, my hands come down. Just one more time. Hands come up as I move. And then as I settle, hands come down. And a little tiny bend in the knees here. Uh, ideally, you want to be feet together. Uh, you don't want to be locked. Just nice, natural, a little bit of a natural bend to those bend to the knees. So just so you can see the turn from this direction, as I start to turn, hands come up. As I settle, hands come down. So one more time from this direction. Hands up, hands down. Now, the next motion, I'm going to take my right leg, lift up, and step it out in front of me on the straight line. So feet are now on a big on a straight line. So I'm stepping a little bit inward. And as I sit on my foot, I'm going to turn my hips, go into a horse stance, and let the shoulder come across, let the elbow come across the body. Then I'm going to bring my hand up into a back fist and return it to the hip. So one more time from this direction. Right leg raises up. I step out. I turn the hips. Let the shoulder come across. Back fist and return. Now, big key here, don't let, don't let your body bend. Go lower this way. Or rotate too far um, inward. So it's going to look like this from this direction. I'm going to raise the right knee. Step it out on the straight line. As I settle, I turn the hips, let the arm throw across, back fist and return. One more time. Raise, return. So in form, 
It would be here. Raise up and return. Now we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to take the back leg, raise it, sit it, throw the back fist and return. And one more time and return. Now I'm taking these small pauses in there. Those pauses won't necessarily be there in the form. It would look more like this. I would come out here, here, here. Now, once I'm done with that third motion, hand is back at the hip, I'm going to bring my arms across, bring the hand out, turn the foot, step, straight punch. So from this direction, it would look like my final throw, hands across, hand out, step punch. So final motion, final two motions, I'm going to bring the right foot up into sort of like a horse stance, I'm going to bring the left foot back around. And when I turn, I'm going to end up in a horse stance. I'm going to bring my right hand, my right elbow, across my body here. Now, it's very important that you don't overturn here like this and that you don't end up turning the foot and bringing yourself off balance. You want to just, from this position, bring the foot up, turn, and settle. Now, when you're doing the form, that, that movement here is not its own independent movement. So you don't go here to here to here. It's all fluid motion. So from here, you're just going to step the foot up to here. So show it this way so you can see. I'm going to step up. As soon as that foot sets, left foot's coming back behind the body. and bringing the right elbow across. So to put it back in the form here, up, throw once. And then it's a little shuffle. It's just a little bit of a shuffle there. So you don't need to bring this left foot together. You're just going to throw, shuffle, throw the other direction. So the left arm is going to come up across. Then slide and return to ready position. So I'm going to do that motion uh, the regular way one more time, and then I'll do it toward you. So here, slide the foot up, right arm across, shuffle, left arm across, out. Um, in the other direction, set, step in the foot up. As soon as it sets, you start to move, right hand across, shuffle, left hand across. Now, when you're doing that, um, the way I like to do it is with my head. I'll come up, and as soon as, as soon as this foot hits and I'm starting to turn, that's when I'll turn my head over the left side. So I'll come up here um, to go the other direction. As soon as this foot sets and my hips start to turn, that's when my head goes. I kind of tie the hips and the head together. Here, shuffle, here. So that's the ensandan. As you can see, it's a little shorter, but it's definitely more complex in its movements. Uh, in another video, we'll start talking about the bunkai of these movements and um, what these all really mean. But in order for that to make sense, you have to have these little pieces of detail down. So take your time going through this form, work the individual pieces of this, and if you have questions, throw them in the comments. If I don't know the answer, I'll get somebody who does. Um, but this is a lot of complex movement, complex motion. So take your time doing this form. Definitely don't speed through this one, especially when you start. Take your time, go through each movement, and you may find that on some of those movements, say this movement here, when you step and turn, you might find yourself overturning or losing your balance. If that happens, you've got to take some extra time doing just that section to make it seem a little more natural to you and to get that movement and balance all meshed into one. So 
Work on this form a lot. Take your time on this. And if you have questions, put them in the comments. We'll see what we can do with them. But so that's Hyun Sundan. Uh, I'm Corey with CDMA. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.